Well, hello, everybody. I'm Tiffany, um, and I am the creator of POV Basketball Moms. And what better way to introduce to the world my first interview by interviewing myself? Of course. All right, so I would like to start by just telling you a little bit about myself. Um, I'm originally from South Bend, Indiana. South Bend, Indiana, stand up. That's my home. Um, I actually started, I didn't start playing basketball until fifth grade. Now, I'm not even going to lie. Like, I was not one of those people. You know how most of the stories you hear, they're like, oh, Sally was playing. She came out the womb. And, and or, you know, she, she picked up her first ball when she was two. No, that was not me. Um, I started playing basketball in the fifth grade and I actually sucked. Right. But what I realized, you know, as I got older, it, it, it wasn't that I necessarily sucked. I had to learn how to develop the gift that I already had. Um, it was actually a gift of mine and a talent that was just lying dormant. And, and it just got to sent someone to awaken that gift and talent. Um, so then I went on and I played basketball elementary school. I remember in uh, sixth grade, I went to McKinley. All my McKinley Mustangs out there, y'all know who y'all are. Yes, we won the city championship. I still remember the score. It was 27 to 19. Okay. Um, and then in, we went to, I went to Edison Middle School um, and I played under Coach T. I love like my coach, Coach Tolchinsky. Um, let me backtrack. The first coach I ever played under, his name was Mr. Earl Townsend, who became eventually my stepdad. Uh, he taught me a lot, um, not just about uh, basketball, but but life through basketball, if that makes sense. So then I ended up going to Adams High School. I went to Adams High School from freshman year until spring break of my 11th grade year. Um, I literally, my mom, my parents, they were looking to move. I didn't know how soon they were looking to move, but being that, um, there are rules that are in place. And I basically, in order for me to be able to play my senior year, I would have already had to have been at, uh, Washington high school already. So I ended up having to move, um, spring break in my 11th grade year to what from Adams High School to Washington High School. Um, you know, you got to go where your parents go. Um, so that's that. Um, and then um, I played um, under Coach um, Cottons and uh, her husband. Um, it was actually fun. Um, I played with uh, Margaret Batiste. I played with Alice Diamondly. Oh, gosh, I played with so many people. Um, Jackie Batiste. Uh, oh my gosh. Oh gosh. I can't remember everybody, but I played, I played on that team my senior year. Um, and I ended up graduating, of course. Okay. Cause my, my family did not play that. Okay. Um, I graduated and I actually received a full scholarship to the HBCU division one, might I add in Atlanta, Georgia, Morris Brown. Okay. Um, I went to Morris Brown my freshman year. So excited. I love the culture of Atlanta. Um, made me feel very proud of who I am. Um, and then they ended up losing their accreditation. So after that, then I found another school. Um, actually, it was a two-year college down in Tifton, Georgia. And I ended up um, playing there. It was called ABEC, Abraham um, Baldwin Agricultural College. I was playing there, and then the last game of the season, I ended up breaking my finger. Okay, so backtrack. I broke my finger, um, and remember, mind you, it was only a two-year. It was a JUCO, right? I right-handed. I broke my right finger, middle finger. Actually, I ain't going to show y'all because I don't want y'all to think I'm flicking y'all off. <laughs> I broke my, my right middle finger, and I couldn't I couldn't play. Like I, like I, said, I had to do all of my homework with my left hand. Um, and so that happened. And then I ended up after that year was over, I had to go back. Um, I had to go back that year and just be a student. And then once I left there, I actually found 
um, Emmanuel College, which is located in Franklin Springs, Georgia, which is only 20 to 25 minutes away from um, UGA, University of Georgia. Um, I ended up going there and I didn't realize so I was there. I actually, the, the year that I set out when I went back to the JUCO, that counted as my redshirt year. Um, so I played under Coach Vanna, um, um, and then in postseason, I ended up tearing my ACL. So I tore my ACL, then I went um, back, and I actually went and I back went back, and I ended up doing some assistant coaching with Coach Bana, Um, and then I graduated from college in 2007. I met my now husband, Jay Womack, who was an awesome kid. He, listen, when I tell you, when I first met him, and I seen him playing in that gym, and I, I asked him, um, when you going to play? He was like, I'm red shirt. I said, uh, you ready now? Okay. So my husband was a two-time All-American um, in the conference. Um, so just to give you a little background of basically our talents colliding, and then we create our children. Um, God allowed us to create our three beautiful children and my son's name is chacho okay his name is chacho um and that that's my that's my bean okay um i have this saying i call them my beans okay my husband is being my bean head um chacho is beanie um my uh, oldest twin by one minute is pork and bean, and my youngest daughter which is jelly bean. So if you hear me say bean or, you know, you, you'll know who I'm referring to. So Chacho, we, he was actually born um, in August uh, 2009. And um, um, from the first time my husband held him, he said he knew something, you know, God spoke to him. And do you not, do y'all not know he just now told me what God said? Like, last month. <laughs> but um make a long story short, he we tried everything. We tried every sport, y'all. Like we didn't want to force on him what we wanted him to do. When I tell you we tried to let him uh we showed him soccer. Uh he tried to bounce the ball. Um he we showed him uh baseball. He tried to shoot the baseball. Um, he did end up playing football, um, maybe like two or three years. Um, and when he was younger, um, third, fourth, second, third or fourth or something like that, he did play football. He did take like, and then he, at first he did try to throw, he tried to shoot the football until, um, Jay had to show him like, no son, that's not, that's not easy that. Um, so he ended up, uh, and then, and then we just always, he just always gravitated toward basketball. And we're like, okay. This is what this little boy wants to do. When I tell y'all, my husband was playing in this adult men's league and um, we would go there and he would just sit and watch. Like, I've never seen that before. Like he would sit and watch. He, like an infant, he will sit on my lap and just watch his daddy play. And it's so funny, he would say, shoot that ball, daddy, shoot that ball. And um, he'll say, and he used to say, gunk it, daddy, gunk it, trying to say dunk, right? <clears throat> so, yeah, that started his journey. And then we actually have pictures. Um, if I could find them, I will let you, I mean, I, if I could put my fingers on them, I'll try to post them somewhere here. Um, but, yeah, he, it, like, we have a picture of him maybe seven months old, eight months old. We, you know, we always had, like, like basketball goals or or little hoops and around at home. Cause his mom and dad played basketball. Like that's how we met. Like we are legit. Like I still watch basketball today. Like Jay still watch basketball, watches basketball. So I'm not just somebody who played, like I actually watch it and I study it and I, and I, and I love it. Um, so yeah, he was at a young age. He always gravitated towards basketball. Always, 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 always. We tried every sport. The only other sport that he actually did and that he actually tried outside of basketball was football. He ended up being, he was, he was playing, um, I think a, I think they called it a tight end because um, he ended up, he, I mean, he hasn't stopped growing, um, but he's 
played the tight end. He actually played quarterback. And so, but then he went right back to basketball. So, and then after a while, he's just like, yeah, I'm just playing basketball only. So um, I just wanted to give y'all an introduction of my child, my one of my children. Um, and he is so serious. Like he, like I'm, we don't force him. He, this is just something that he wants to do. Now my girls, I think they're still trying to figure out exactly what they want to do. I know pork and bean, she loves gymnastics, like for sure. She actually taught herself how to do a, um, a aerial, um, a back, uh, back handspring, and she's working on a back flip. Um, Jelly Bean, she seems like she's interested in basketball, but she's not super serious yet. But mind you, I didn't start getting serious to the fifth grade, so I'm, I'm starting to feel like they may be following the trend. Um, but yeah, so but my 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 athlete. Um, that I'm going to mostly talk about is my son, Chacho. And um, so, yeah, just a little introduction. Um, AAU, um, he played um, the first AAU team he played for. Um, Jay actually coached him. Um, then he played for several other ones. And then Jay ended up coming back around full circle, coaching him again. Um in North Carolina, you can't play on the basketball team until seventh grade. Um, so he ended up sixth grade year with the Piedmont. Then he went to Charlotte Latin uh, for seventh grade year. And um, that's when I did not know I was going to have to teach him spiritual warfare. Okay. What do I mean? Um, at the beginning of the school year, he was so excited. He was so stoked to go to Charlotte Latin. Um, it was awesome. The teachers were awesome. Um, and it was all good until basketball season. <laughs> uh, when basketball season, season started, um, the hatred showed up. Um, and that, which lets me know it was always there. It just, y'all, yeah, I realize I'm missing my A ring, y'all. Where you go? Anyway, um, it was always there. Um, but the hatred. So when I say hatred, remind mind y'all, I, I'm a Jesus follower. So I am, I strongly believe that, I mean, we are spiritual beings having a natural experience. So there was a very, very deeply rooted demonic spirit of racism. Okay. Um, deeply rooted racism. Um, just to give you an example um, I actually had to, we had to sit him down one day. Um, cause he, after one of the games, he was very, very upset and I could tell he was upset. Um, and basically this particular game, the team that were playing weren't, they weren't the best. Um, and they were kind of like beating them pretty easily. And, um, so Chaz was like, look, you know, basically people who didn't get to play all the time and start, let y'all rock out, as the young people say. And he went ahead, and after he said that, then another teammate was like, oh, well, basically trying to imply like, oh, you, we, we didn't like when you said that. When in actuality, the other captain had said it too, but I guess because of who it was, they didn't respond that way. Um, and so... So he goes to the locker room and he tell you know he's in there and one of the teammates mentioned this to him and he says like okay like such and such said it too and you say anything to him and um, another teammate so this is kind of like a form of bullying honestly um, another teammate was like well he says some graphic words and my son's just like what's up what you want to do and of course you know he's gonna play the 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 other child played the victim right like oh what are you doing and so. I finally see him and he's like really upset. He gets in the car. He says, mommy, I, I, I can't wait to this basketball season over. I was like, now, mind you, this is a child who came out the womb wanting to play basketball. I knew then something was seriously wrong. Something was wrong for him to say that if something was wrong. And then one thing that I will never forget that he said to me and it broke my heart. He said to me, he said, mommy, I know. If I would have beat him up, I would have ruined my future. So.
So this is this is one of the many things that as a mom, I'm sure you all have had to deal with, right? Having to deal with how do I get my child to get back on track um, emotionally? Um, how do I keep my child from basically spazzing out? Like, how do I keep them from doing that? And it broke my heart because, and it wasn't until after that next day, I had him, we had me, Jay and me, we had him sit down and I, I, I drafted an email. I said, look, you're going to tell, you're going to tell me every single thing that has ever happened at that school verbatim. And, um, just to name a few, another example. Um, so he was at lunchtime and someone, he, he got the buffalo chicken strips to eat. And a white boy says to him, of course you would get the chicken. Um, but I think this, this one takes the cake. Um, he said he was in a locker room and one of his teammates asked him for a pass to say the word nigger. They asked Chacho, could they get, could he give him them a pass to say, to, to say the word nigger? And of course, Chacho's response was like, are you serious? Like, did you really ask me that? And so now mind you, this is mental. Now this is, this is like, mental um, abuse, right? This is something that he's dealing with. Um, and, and I noticed that at the beginning, from the beginning of the year to when basketball started, there was a shift. And it's important that you pay attention to your children's emotions, their mental state, their mental health is important. I noticed he said, oh, mommy, I don't, I don't, I don't want to go to school today. Can I get a mental health day? Hmm? mental health day can i get a mental health day um when your children start asking for that i need you to dig a little deeper i need you to find out what's wrong what, what's going on because obviously something is wrong um and then that's where the lord used me to basically help him to sift through those emotions and peel back the layers of what was happening this y'all this is he would he would be in class he told me he would be in class and there were children who did not attend the game make comments to him like, you should pass the ball more. You shouldn't shoot as much. So again, what that means to me is his teammates were having conversations about him outside of school because how else with this student in his class who did not attend the game. No. Or even where would that come from? Where would that comment come from? So when I tell you, this is something that as a mom, I had to deal with when I say spiritual warfare, because in every way they were trying to crush my son's spirit. Now you may not think it's that deep. I don't care what you think, but I know that everybody is being operated by a spirit. And in that case, that deeply rooted spirit, the demonic spirit of racism was generational. How do you know? Because obviously they're having conversations at home about this freely. Why would you think it's okay? It would be okay to ask an African-American child to give you a pass to say the word nigger. Like why, where in your mind do you think that that would be okay? Um, and so that's some of the things that was, what that was happening. Um, and then I'm going to make this a part two because I actually don't want it to be too long, but um, this is the first quarter of the game. And I'll talk to y'all soon.